Welcome to 7 Days to Die. I'm Valerian and in this video I'm going to show you how to survive and what you should do right away to make the most of your first day. First you will want to start a game. I should have a separate video on how to start a new game. Link should be in the description below. So go ahead and start a new game. I suggest starting novice game if you are new, but random gen will work just fine. In this case we're going to do random gen. Click start and you will spawn in after a few minutes. Random gen means random world generator. This means you will get a random procedurally generated world that is unique and has its own seed and is not pre-made like with novice game. Now I will assume that you have settings on 60 minute days. Even if you don't, this should still work as long as it's not less than 60 minutes. Otherwise you will need to go into multiple days to get this done. Now that we've spawned in and read the quest prompts, we want to start immediately punching some grass. Here. Now you're going to need more plant fiber initially than the bedroll because you're going to have to make plant fiber clothing anyway, so you might as well gather it all in one go. Alright, now that we've punched enough grass to make a bedroll, let's make a bedroll. And while you're waiting for the bedroll to make, you can just punch some more grass. And once the bedroll's made, go ahead and place that down. You want to take this stuff off your hotbar too. Just take it off. You don't need it on your hotbar except for your bandage. I place it on the 7 key so if you're new and you don't know what to have, kind of hotbar to have or if you're new to survival games in general just put it on your 7 key right here in the spot. Then punch a tree like in Minecraft until you got two wood. So we're going to run over this tree here. Right over here. Just punch it a couple times. About four or five times. Okay, we have two wood. Then scour the ground for rocks. The option to collect comes up when you mouse over them. Sometimes they are hard to find, but just keep looking. We're gonna run around here. All the rocks we see, sometimes, sometimes they're big like this. And you need four of them. Sometimes they're small, like this one right here, but you can still see it. When looking, try to stay in the area you just spawned. That's a safe area for at least a few minutes, but if you travel too far, zombies will start spawning sooner. Also, be on the lookout for bird's nests while you are finding rocks. They can be found in the same manner. So, you just hit E on the bird's nest and collect the feathers. You can either shift left click on the feathers itself, or you can just hit the R key to collect everything. Once you have some wood and more fiber and about five rocks, make a stone axe. Right here and go craft. Okay. Wait until the quest pops up before making each new quest item. Example, make the stone axe, then wait for make fiber clothes quest to come up before making any fiber clothes. If you don't, it won't give you credit and you will have to make it again. So make sure craft plant fiber clothing is up before you start crafting the fiber clothing or you'll have to craft it again. So remember I said we need to grab more fiber than, than we needed to make a bedroll? Well, there you go. Here's why. Now we're going to make uh, plant fiber clothing. So I just type fiber in the search bar. Click. Craft. Craft, and I just go down the line except for plant fiber hat. You don't need to make that. You just make the gloves, the hood, the pants, shirt, and the shoes. And as you make them, you wear them. Take your stone axe and chop some wood, but chop some boulders first while you wait for the fiber clothes to craft. To get the stone, you need to repair the axe when it breaks. I'm going to start chopping some trees down. Now just a little bit. You don't want to you don't want to chop too much before you start chopping boulders. Okay, there's a big one over there. So let's go over here and and get this boulder. Okay. 
After you complete the quest to wear all the fiber clothes, the game will ask you to make a club. Make the club and put it in your hotbar. Grats, you can now kill zombies with your club, but don't be too hasty. The club sucks, so don't. What you want to use is a bow, and when it prompts you to make a bow and some arrows, now is the time to go to a nearby boulder and chop a lot of stone and chop down a tree or two. Gather about 100 stone and 100 wood. The bigger boulders give you the most stone per swing, so find one of those and go till you get that 100 stone. There's a boulder right here, so we're gonna get 100 stone. This is going to take a little bit, so I'm going to skip ahead until I have 100 stone. Okay, when this happens, when our item needs repairs, see why we got stone first? Because in order to repair it, it requires one stone. So we hit repair, and it repairs the stone axe. We'll do that when it runs out of durability. Okay, we have 100 stone. Let's go ahead and start with wood. Now we have 18, so we're going to need about 90, 80 more to get 100. Okay, we have 104 wood. That's enough. Now I want to show you one more thing before we finish here. Now, notice how, how slow the stone is gathering. Okay, but I am gathering other stuff that it, I can't gather from the big boulder. Now watch how much stone I gather from the big folder and how fast I gather it. See how much faster that is? How much more I get per swing? I'm getting like two, sometimes three per swing. So that's why you want to mine boulders. Now you have 100 stone and wood. Search the ground again for bird's nests until you have about 30 feathers. In fact, just loot every bird's nest you see and be on the lookout for them as you travel from now on. So we're gonna find a couple more bird's nests here. So we have more than 30 feathers. Make a bow, then some arrows quick. If zombies have not already started spawning, they will soon. So get on it. Make sure you put the bow on your hotbar and immediately press R to load the bow so it's ready when you select it next time you need to kill a zombie. Okay, so we're going to make a bow. Always make the bow first. You'll see why in a second. And always repair your stone axe before you make a bunch of arrows so you won't waste time waiting for the arrows to make or have to cancel the arrows just to repair your stone axe again. Just do it beforehand. Okay, then we're going to type ARR. That brings up stone ha arrow. And just click, you can click the arrow with the line next to it for max and then hit craft. Okay, we're going to select the bow, and we're going to hit the R key, and that loads the bow. Next, the game should tell you to make wood frames. Three to be exact. Make them and place them on the ground by putting them in your hand and right-clicking the ground or any block. So we're going to go... Frame. Now you need to type the entire word, the entire thing, wood frame, both wood and frame. You have to type it all out like that or it won't pull up correctly. Now you could do max. I usually like to have about at least 30 wood frames in my inventory at all times. But just for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to make three for now. And take the wood frame. One, two, three. And there you go. Upgrade them by right clicking and holding with your stone axe. Later on, you can use a hammer, nail gun, or even a wrench. Though I usually don't use the wrench, it's pretty bad, but will work in a pinch. Next, quickly make a campfire. Remember when searching for something, just type the first two or three letters of the item name you wish to search for. This saves time. Sometimes you have to type more like with wood frame, but usually you don't. So go here. Camp. I just type camp, campfire. I could even type cam if I wanted to. It doesn't take too long to make. 
Put it on your hotbar and then right click on top of the wood frames or anywhere else. You now get four skill points and a short message telling you to head to a settlement, aka a trader. You should have a compass on top of your HUD or screen. Spin around until the yellow exclamation mark is in the middle of the compass. That's the direction you're facing. Go in that direction and head to the trader. So right here, see the exclamation mark at the top? Right here where my cursor is circling? That's where you need to head to on the compass. So when you spin around, the compass moves, okay? And so yeah, so start heading towards that. Warning, be very careful of the wasteland in any difficulty. Avoid it if possible. The biome is riddled with random landmines that will one-shot you out of nowhere and are hard to see. Again, you cannot afford to die on day one, especially on higher difficulties. Also, whenever you're running, you want to have your bow out with an arrow loaded at all times. Because you never know when you suddenly need to attack something that's coming after you. If you're not sure what Wasteland looks like, check the map each time you spot a new biome. When you see yellow on the map, that's Wasteland. It's not the same as Burnt Forest Biome, the biome with dead black trees and burnt logs everywhere. Be aware of that. The ground in Wasteland looks gray where the Burnt Biome ground looks black and will appear as such color on the map. Remember, Burnt Biome is fine and it's black on the map, Wasteland is not, and it's yellow. You should have encountered a zombie by now. If you are new, use your bow and aim for the neck. And that's how you kill a zombie. Only fight zombies on day one if you know what you're doing or if you have no choice. Time is critical, especially if you are playing on 60 minute days and have the zombies on sprint or higher at night. Also, be aware of the snow biome if the zombies are on sprint or higher. A running lumberjack zombie is almost certain death for a newer player. If you spawn in the snow biome when zombies sprint during the day or in the wasteland, consider restarting the game as it is generally a waste of time to continue and most likely will result in repeated deaths. Just to clarify, if the zombies are on any setting lower than sprint, it should be easy to run from the lumberjacks, so it's okay to be in the snow biome in this situation. Just watch your back and make sure you don't try to fight the lumberjacks and just run if you are new. Disregard what I said about the snow biome if your zombies don't run or they walk during the day, and it's daytime. Treat it like any other biome. Just remember to steer clear at night if they are on sprint or above at night. Honestly, if you are inexperienced, I strongly suggest you set movement speed to jog or slower so you can get comfortable fighting them. Then progress to a faster setting when you are comfortable. Sometimes a trader will be in one of these undesirable zones, especially if it is in wasteland, you may want to restart. You may not get blown up or run down by a lumberjack and make it to the trader just fine. It's your call. Just know the risk involved. Remember again to pick up every bird's nest you see. Loot every trash bag you come across and every car you find along the way. Try to keep the yellow exclamation mark in the center of your compass or wherever you're heading. Avoid zombies along the way. You're not ready to fight them yet. As long as your zombies are walking, you should be able to outrun them. See a bird's nest right here? Grab that. Grab anything you see along the way. There's a car, like there's this car right here. Go ahead and loot that. You want to loot every single thing you see in the beginning. Also, you want to chop these little gore piles. They give you bones in the early game. That's really important. So you basically chop gore blocks and you loot everything you see. There's this pile of trash here. We're going to go ahead and loot that. You see the stuff that comes up. Just hit R. Just grab it. You can sort it out later. Right now, time's of the essence. If you come across a snow biome or see it, make a stone shovel and dig the snowy ground. You will get snowballs that you can use later to make bottled water without having to travel to a lake to fill the water bottles. Again, be very careful if your zombies are on sprint or faster, and if they are, leave as soon as you grab about 100 to 300 snow. That should be enough. And you come over here to the snow. 
Once you make your shovel, put it in your hotbar, select it, put it in your hand, and left click, and hold left click. And you'll start digging at the cost of stamina. You can see your snowballs in the bottom right corner of your screen. See how they're going up? 60, 67, 75, 82. Do this until you got at least 100 snowballs. In this case, we're going to go for like 150. That was a bear. Yeah, stay away from bears in the beginning. Do not get near them, okay? And don't let them get too close to you. You might have to leave early. In fact, we're just going to leave right now, and we're just going to leave that bear. When it comes to animals, snakes and rabbits are a waste of time to try to kill. Both are hard to hit. The rabbit will waste your time and stamina for only a tiny bit of meat and hide. The snake is hard to hit without getting hit yourself. Not worth the potential health loss and time wasted killing it for the tiny amount of meat and hide it has. Wolves, and especially dire wolves, are very dangerous. Do not fight them early game unless you are that good or have a gun. Even then, be careful and have good aim. So kill any deer and boar you find along the way. You will need the meat later to make bacon and eggs. When you arrive at the trader, search every little container you find there, from bags of trash to any kitchen sinks or lockers you may find. Yeah, some of these stations are destroyed. Go ahead and search them anyway. Looks like this one we can still use. There doesn't really seem to be much else here, so... Don't leave the trader without checking the forge first. Where this is depends on the trader, but search around and eventually you will find it. In this case, it's right here. Right here. If it is destroyed, then forget about it. But if it's usable, then you can make the pipes you need and a cooking pot and some forged iron for a bicycle. In this case, it's usable. First, we're going to throw some wood in it. Okay, and then uh, we're going to take... Do we have any iron? I know we have some iron right here. Put the iron that we, the raw iron that we do have in this spot. And we're gonna turn it on. And now we're gonna get some clay. If it's usable, mine the small boulders with your stone axe or preferably any type of pickaxe to get more iron ore. Dig some dirt or clay soil to melt in the forge along with the iron ore to make these items. So when you mine these small boulders with your stone axe, you get a good amount of iron. See the iron ore being being plussed in the bottom right of the corner of the screen? Also, several other resources are also being mined at the same time. That's what these small boulders are good for. They're good for other resources besides stone. Well, they do gather stone. They don't gather it nearly as good as these, but these don't have the resources that these little boulders do. Next, we're going to want to dig for clay. You can dig just about anywhere where there's dirt, like right here. So... In earlier patches, um, there were specific clay that you had to mine. Clay was like a specific type of resource on, on its own. It was not the same as dirt. But in Alpha 17, it's the same as dirt. It's called clay soil. So we have some clay soil right here. Let's head back to the trader and turn that into the forge. So we're just gonna go ahead and put our iron in here and put our clay soil in here to melt it. Put a little bit more wood in there. Okay, so once we have enough iron and enough clay, go ahead and first thing you wanna do is make a cooking pot. Then after that, you're gonna type pipe in here and you're gonna make at least three short iron pipes. You're gonna queue that up, okay? Then you're gonna wanna make forged iron. When you're done, if it's not usable, find a road and travel down it until you run into a town. Unless you've found one already that is located in the forest biome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and look at our map and look at the nearest road, okay? And this is the road right here. So we're in this case, we're going to head towards this right there. Now, this may take more than the day. I know I said surviving your first day. The day is pretty much over. You pretty much done what you need to do on your first day short of finding your spot so we're going to spend the rest of the day looking for a spot to place our stuff so we're going to get next to the road and we're going to travel down there make sure you get your cooking pot and your pipes and we're going to run to the nearest road in this case it's right here so when you have your map open click quick waypoint and start heading to the red flag on your compass i showed you how to how to spot things on your compass before like with the trader exclamation mark 
We want to do the same thing with this red flag. So we found a town right here. There's a trader back there. We have a road here and this is a nice flat area. Near that town, in that forest area, pick a nice and flat area to build. So we have a nice flat area to build here. Now this may take longer than a day to find the right spot. In some cases, depending on where you spawn, and what map it is. It may take more than a day to find a spot. If it does, don't spend longer than day three looking for it. If it's 1700 and you haven't found a good spot, just do the next steps I outlined here. Then look for it until you find it. Now, in this case, we found our spot, right? It's a nice flat area, it's near a town, it's near a trader. In this case, we found our spot rather quickly. You're not going to build right away. Once you find a spot, just put a campfire, a bedroll, and a chest down there for now. Throw all non-essential items in that chest. We're going to come over here. And we're going to basically... This is nice and flat. And we're going to go chest. First thing we want to do is make a chest. Next thing we're going to make is a campfire. And then a bedroll. Place the campfire down. And wait for the bedroll to make. Looks like we're pretty low on wood, so we're going to chop this wood down here. And there we have it. Next, cook some food and water. Take your cooking pot and place it in the cooking pot slot at the top right slots above the fuel spot. So basically, we're going to take our cooking pot and put it right here. Okay. Then we're going to take some wood. We're going to throw some wood in there. We're also going to take our non-essential items and we're going to throw it in this chest. So in this case, we don't need the, the pipes right away. We don't need the iron right away. We don't need the animal fat. Or the large bones right away. And we don't need this can of chili yet or this bottle of water. But we want to take the bottle of water. We do need the bottle of water. We don't need the plant fibers. Got stone arrows. And we don't need these steel arrows yet. Take all the eggs you find from bird's nests and raw meat from killing animals into your inventory and use the campfire with the cooking pot in order to make bacon and eggs and water from either snow you dug up, the snow biome, or bottles of murky water. So we're gonna click on this meat, bacon and eggs right here in the campfire and we're gonna go ahead and only make one. So let's go ahead and cook it. Now, if we had some empty jars, we'd be able to make some bottled water, but we don't. So you're not gonna see me do it in this video. But actually what we can do right now, we can eat this can of chili and use the empty can we got from it combined with the snowball in our inventory to make boiled water. And so it doesn't stack, so every time you make one, you're going to have to make another one manually. And then you're going to want to drink it. Use, drink it, and you hit use, and you eat the bacon and eggs. Obviously, do not drink murky water or drink directly from any body of water. Dysentery sucks and is never an alternative to dying of thirst. Just let yourself die if it comes to it. You waste less time. If you don't have a cooking pot or eggs and your max stam is below 100 and your chili is gone, you can make some charred meat by using the campfire without a cooking pot. In this case, we had one, but let's say we didn't have one, okay? We can make some charred meat right here. Just click charred meat and click cook. Now, charred meat's not very ideal. You always want to make bacon and eggs whenever you can instead of charred meat. You only want to use charred meat as a last resort because it's kind of a waste of meat. It'll get you good in a pinch. It'll keep you from dying and starving. And remember that it dehydrates you, so you'll probably need to drink some water afterwards. If these recipes do not come up in the campfire's menu, make sure there is wood in the fire and that you have the right ingredients first. So as I already showed you, you put the cooking pot in that slot and you put wood in there before you start cooking. Make sure there's wood in there or else nothing will come up and be like, why isn't anything coming up? 
I have the ingredients, well, you didn't put wood in there. So you've at least got food and water and may have a place to build or at least found a pre-made building to take over. If your zombies run at night, clear out a small building or house before nightfall and make sure it is closed and secure. Make a door to replace the one you broke if you had to break in. If your zombies never run or always run, then run around all night chopping down trees and large boulders, gathering resources for your first build. Congratulations, you have survived your first night. Now obviously, in random gen, it could take you more than a day to find a suitable spot to base. If it takes longer than day three, this could be a bad map or spawn. And it might be time to restart, depending on whether or not you started with Navis Gain or random gen. No matter what, you now have a good start on the game. It may take you longer than a day to accomplish this. However, as long as you find a spot by day three, You'll be on your way to surviving your first week and horde night. That's all for now. Tell me what you thought of this video by leaving a comment. I have a Twitch channel. Stop by and pay me a visit sometime. Links in the description below. If you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel and sharing this video with someone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.